There are two supported policy types by the CPU manager. None is the default. It explicitly enables the default CPU affinity scheme enforced using CFS quarter. When the node runs many CPU bound ports, the workload can move to different CPU cores depending on whether the port is throttled and which CPU cores are available at scheduling time. Many workloads are not sensitive to this migration and thus work fine without intervention. For workloads that are sensitive to this migration, the CPU manager should be configured with the policy type set to static. To be considered for static resource allocation, the workload must satisfy certain requirements. The static policy only allows containers in guaranteed ports with integer CPU requests access to exclusive CPUs on the node. This introduces three important terminologies, guaranteed ports, exclusive CPUs, and integer CPU requests. The static policy manages a shared pool of CPUs that initially contains all CPUs in the node. Now, the kubelet is able to make CPU reservations for its own purposes. The amount of exclusively allocatable CPUs is equal to the total number of CPUs minus any CPU reservations by the kubelet. CPUs reserved for exclusive use are taking in integer quantity from the initial shared pool in ascending order by physical core ID. The eventual shared pool is the set of CPUs on which containers in the best effort and burstable ports run. Containers in the guaranteed ports with fractional CPU requests also run on CPUs in the shared pool. Only containers that are both part of a guaranteed port and have integer CPU requests are assigned to exclusive CPUs. When Kubernetes creates a port, it assigns one of three quality of service classes to the port. For a port to be given a quality of service class of guaranteed, every container must have a memory limit and a memory request. For every container in the port, the memory limit must be equal to the memory request. Every container in the port must have a CPU limit and a CPU request. And for every container in the port, the CPU limit must be equal to the CPU request. This output shows that Kubernetes gave the port a quality of service class of guaranteed. The output also verifies that the port container has a memory request that matches its memory limit and it has a CPU request that matches the CPU limit. A port is given a quality of service class burstable if the port does not meet the criteria for the quality of service class guaranteed. In this configuration, the memory request and limits are not equal. This is one of the requirements for a port to receive the quality of service class guaranteed. Additionally, at least one container in the port should have a memory or CPU request or limit specified. For a port to be given a quality of service class of best effort, the containers in the port must not have any memory or CPU limits or request defined. Now up to this stage, I've given the impression that there is a one-to-one -one mapping between a NUMA node and a socket. This is not generally true. There may be multiple sockets on a single NUMA node or individual CPUs of a single socket may be connected to different NUMA nodes. The behavior of the static policy can be fine-tuned Three policy options exist for the static CPU manager policy. If the full physical CPUs only policy option is specified, 
the static policy will always allocate full physical cores. Without this option, the static policy allocates CPUs using a topology-aware best fit allocation. If the distribute CPUs across NUMA policy option is specified, the static policy evenly distributes CPU cores across NUMA nodes in cases where more than one NUMA node is required to satisfy the allocation. Now, by default, the CPU manager aligns CPU allocations at the NUMA boundary, which could result in performance degradation if CPUs need to be pulled from more than one NUMA node to satisfy the allocation. Finally, if the align by socket policy option is specified, CPUs will be considered aligned at the socket boundary when deciding how to allocate CPUs to a container.